All right, welcome back to Shadow Shorts. If we've never met before, my name is Jeff Eccles. I am a senior advisor and the head of marketing at Shadow Partners. And every day I bring a new guest to you uh, so that we can dig into problems and solutions that uh, revolve around innovation for the built environment. And today I am joined by Jamie Fleming. He's the founder and the CEO of Altura. Hasn't always been called Altura. Um, but uh, what they're doing over there at Altura is fascinating. We were talking before we went live, and I want to know more about AI, about uh, generative tools, about digital twins specifically in the training and operations space. So, Jamie, thank you for joining me today. Okay. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for thanks for having me on. It's an honor. It's an honor and a privilege. Well, thank you for that. Yeah. Um, so tell me. Why? I, we, before we went live, we were talking about something that I hear about all the time. It's, it's we, we, we are very much in a transition, a generational transition. And sometimes we talk about that in terms of leadership and knowledge share. Sometimes it's, it's operations and, and, and again, knowledge, you know, how do I do this? How do I do that? And it fascinates me that you are looking at the intersection of artificial intelligence, generative tools, and solving those types of problems. So what are you working on? Yeah, no, great. Thanks, Jeff. So, you know, what, what we, let, let me just give you a brief history of what has led sure. us to this moment. Yeah. So, you know, my background many years ago is in architecture and specifically in 3D models. And I trained as an architect and practiced for a number of years. The company that we were known by, Studio 216, was um, using 3D models to just create visuals of things like buildings for marketing, et cetera. That has turned over, over the years, has turned into more of a concept of a digital twin of how can you take a digital representation of the built environment and leverage it for different workloads? Well, the workload that we have really dug deeply into is immersive training. How can you okay. take a complex environment or a piece of equipment and let somebody interactively train step by step by step on an operation for uh, a procedure, for example? Now, what's really interesting, what's happened in the last 12 to 18 months with the rise of you know, generative AI and chat GPT is there has been sort of a fundamental shift in how people can access knowledge and information, okay? Because there's a chat interface now that you can essentially, like you could Google anything and then start seeing search results. What's so fascinating about chat and generative AI is that you can get specific information back from the chat that you ask, okay? Mm -hmm. So what does this have to do with training? Well, you know, the, the, the number one problem for frontline workers globally is a knowledge problem. You have an aging workforce of people who have, say, maintained your boiler in your building for 30 years and they're retiring. Well, who's going to take over that and how do they know every last bit of information of what this person has learned about how this particular piece of equipment works? Um, so you've got an aging workforce. You've got a lack of new people attracted to many of these uh, positions. And we just have more sophisticated, complex equipment and machinery entering the market all the time. And so there's sort of a, all these confounding problems means that it's, it's difficult to train and skill up your frontline workforce. Okay, threading all the way back to how does, what does this have to do with generative AI? Well, what we've figured out is the same way that we have for years now taken a 3D model of, let's just say it's a boiler, and we've broken down from the standard operating procedure of how you do different procedures on that boiler to say, uh, do its annual maintenance. Well, what we have typically done is someone has gone into a program like Altura and built step-by-step -step instruction on how you remove different parts of this boiler and put it together. And you can see visually how that happens. And the cool thing is if you're in like a headset, for example, you can use your hands and actually practice on disassembling that and in, in, in building what we call muscle memory. Well, what generative AI and chat allows you to do is essentially 
um, on demand, ask a question and chat with that boiler. So we have this concept of chat with your equipment. So I, I, I'm standing in front of this equipment. I, I, uh, it's time to do the annual maintenance. I can just say, you know, what are the steps to uh, maintain this boiler, you know, annually? And, and it spits out a result. So what we're doing is connecting now the step-by-step -step instructions in that standard operating procedure with the visual instructions that shows you step-by-step-by-step -step -step how to do it. And we've developed a concept we call see it, learn it, do it. Okay. And the idea is, let's say, Jeff, you are, um, you know, you've got to change the radiator in your car and you've never done it before. What you're probably going to do is go to YouTube and you're going to search for a video of like, how do I do this thing? Well, for, you know, industrials, that doesn't exist for good reason, because a lot of these SOPs are the IP of the company. This is the, their manufacturing process, or this is this is how they are maintaining their equipment. They don't want that out there publicly. Um, but they need that same kind of on-demand visual that show people how to do these procedures. And so what Altura does is it bridges that gap using AI to translate the standard operating procedure into a visual that you can then get on demand it structures all of that information for you and it gives you the specific images or step-by-step -step instructions that you need um, in, in context. And so it's really is a powerful solution to solve this at scale um, for, you know, any kind of industrial or frontline use case. Yeah, that's amazing. You know, I think about, again, there's, there's this knowledge transfer problem, whether, whether we're talking about, uh, a, a CEO of a firm down the line through the leadership to project managers and so on and so forth. But I think, um, you know, what you're talking about in terms of the, the operations and maintaining, uh, I think is, is right on. I have a group of students a couple of years ago in my incubator class that Posed that one problem was the again the aging out the the loss of craftspeople and so they were looking at historic preservation. Well, if something happens. How do we recreate the capital of this column yeah. or, or something? Right. And so they they didn't quite make the leap to what you're talking about, but it made a lot of sense. Hey, we're going to use machine learning, we're going to use AI, um, and, and we're going to create create a tr they called it. Um, what was the uh, the name? It was uh, AI Apprentice was the name of their project. Perfect. So we're gonna we're gonna train an apprentice that's gonna learn from the lessons from the the craftsperson. And so you're right. you're obviously quite a few steps ahead of way, where they were, but the, but it's a real problem. Yeah, yeah, and you know that um, we kind of think about it in, in, in two um, kind of two workloads. You've got um, as an organization you need tools and methodologies to create this knowledge base, right? So you need a way to, at scale, you may have hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of different operating procedures on all of your equipment. Well, you know, before AI, there was no way that there was, there was not enough hours in a lifetime or a, a million lifetimes to translate every single one of those into a visual step-by-step -step instruction, right? And so what, what AI provides the opportunity to take large data sets and have the AI parse through each one of those standard operating procedures and, um, and essentially puts them into a data lake, okay? And then, and so this is kind of the creator story of taking operating procedures, and I, I'll just go technical for one quick second because I think it's kind of fascinating. We've trained the AI models to translate English into, um, into software speak or JSON commands. And so the JSON commands are what our software understands if I'm trying to build a step-by-step -step instruction each JSON command tells the system, take a wrench and um, show the wrench moving. This is a, a 3D model of a wrench. Show it moving from the table over to the bolt 
on the radiator. Okay, and that would be a JSON command that would that would tell that piece of geometry to move from point A to point B and create that visual animation. Well, what AI can do is it can convert English into JSON command and automate the creation of that step inside of the platform. And that's how you go from PDF to a visual simulation automatically. That's all part of the creator story. And that's super important to solve this problem because it needs to be solved at scale, okay? Now, you, you now have the frontline worker story. They're not creating this content. They're just trying to consume it. How do they consume it? Well, what's fascinating and interesting about, you know, what chat GPT and chat is everybody has a smartphone, right? The ability to take a phone or a tablet and ask a question, whatever question it is, in any way that you want, because you can use natural language, you and I will ask the same question in slightly different ways. Well, AI understands using natural language that we mean the same thing. We're asking the same question, even though we asked it in different ways. And it can connect that with the specific response you're looking for. So you can have many different ways to ask a question, and the same output will come back to you. And that is what is really powerful about AI and generative language from the, from the frontline worker story, because they just want information. They don't really want to go to a PDF and have to look at the table of contents and then find the right section and then go to that section and read the three pages and try to look at the diagrams and put on their reading glasses and try to see the fine text you can now ask a question and boom, you get a visual, see it, which was an on-demand kind of video that you can watch, or you can learn it by going through and doing step-by-step -step instructions, or you can do it by having an augmented um, overlay on that physical piece of equipment that's actually guiding you through that operation. And so see it, learn it, do it is the new way that frontline workers can perform their jobs. That's a, that's that's amazing, and it it um, you know as you're describing it, I, I I felt that it's like that's that's me, <laughs> the reading glasses and the, and the whole bit, absolutely, it makes sense. Um, if you want to know more about Altura and what's going on over there, go to a l t o u r a dot com. The URL is in the bottom left hand corner of your screen right now. Um, you could also probably reach out to Jamie on. LinkedIn, which may be where you're viewing this uh, recording or this live video right now, and um, you know, learn more about how you can utilize Altura for your training, for your uh, operations, for the knowledge transfer in your organization. And if you enjoy conversations like this, first of all, um, Shadow Shorts. The goal is to have uh, Shadow Shorts be a daily show every single day of bringing a new guest to you to talk about innovation for the built environment. Sometimes it's AI and generative design. Sometimes it's it's um, uh, sustainability or code um, issues, housing issues, who knows what it's gonna be. Um, trying to bring you the best and the brightest voices in the world of innovation for the built environment. That's what Shadow Shorts is all about. And if that piques your interest and you wanna go deeper into some of these conversations, Join us for Shadow Summit. It's This year will be our seventh annual Shadow Summit. It'll be in Atlanta this year from October 24th, kicking off the evening of the 24th and running through the 26th. We are constantly updating the website right now as uh, speakers are falling into place and we're getting things scheduled out. So go to shadowsummit.com for more information on that. Jamie Fleming, thank you so much for joining me for this conversation. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for having yeah. me. Yeah, absolutely. This is one that uh, we could spend a couple of hours talking about this. <laughs> and, I, and I'd still be learning. So that, that's a good thing. Cool. All right. Take care. Yeah, you too. And as uh, everybody out there, thank you for this. We'll be back tomorrow with a new guest for Shadow Shorts. We'll see you then. Thanks, everybody.